Hey, hello again, Vinyl Community. This is Matt, and uh, this is kind of a, a follow-up video to my last one about the cassette deck, and it's all li a, a little bit embarrassing. So, for those of you who don't know, I've been um, sort of on the hunt in thrift stores, Goodwill stores, for a new cassette deck. Well, an old cassette deck, but a replacement cassette deck, if you know what I mean. And I hadn't really had much luck whatsoever. I found a couple. Um, but they were, you know, old kind of crap. And I went again today after work. I hit up, I think, three or four Goodwills. Uh, one of them even actually had two cassette decks, but they were really low end. Um, one was a Technics, one was an MCS deck. Um, but they would have been low end even back in the day. They were like from one of those um, uh, uh, sort of all in one component systems that you could get. Um, separates but clearly all meant to go together and they were you know with the bright garish 80s graphics high speed doubling emblazoned on them and everything so i wasn't really interested i didn't even test those out i did find one pioneer yesterday that um i had hopes for it was it was low end but it was so well kind of silver it was like from the champagne uh series and um, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll at least plug it in, but it didn't work. It was making this weird grinding noise and none of the controls worked. But it would have been pretty low end. It's just the fact that it was Pioneer. So anyway, fast forward to um, tonight and uh, I was talking to Brad. Um, uh, Brad, the, the, the tech guy who has his, uh, the, the tech uh, podcast. And, you know, and I said to him, I said, geez, you know, it's funny. It seems like the tape deck's playing pre-recorded cassettes. Okay, it's just when I record onto a, a blank cassette that it's not working. And um, this was the uh, the offending cassette, this TDK. It's pretty new. It was new old stock. I had recorded onto it before, but um, um, where things went wrong was over the weekend. You can see this is best mixtape number one. I um I recorded side A and that went fine, no problem. See, this was originally recorded on my Kenwood, but it was running slow and in fact it was obvious when I played some of this back. I thought, geez, some of these tracks sound really slow, so I wanted to re-record it, record over it on the Pioneer CTF five uh, five five that I have. And side A went okay, went fine, no problem. Well, then I started recording side B. And I think I made a mistake on it, so I had to rewind it and just listen to it a little bit. And I was like, what the hell is this? It Not only did it sound muffled, but it sounded um, it, like it was even breaking up in places too. Like you would get a bit of sound and it would fade all the way out and then come back. And, and so then I tried a, another cassette, another TDK, a different one. And that was a little better, but still didn't sound great. I was like, geez, what the hell's the matter with the cassette deck? So... I, um, first of all, I tried a regular Scotch um, head cleaner that I have here. I already had this. It's typical of the head cleaners you would have gotten, probably probably from the 80s or early 90s. Didn't seem to make any difference. All this is really doing is buffing the uh, tape head stuff. And um, then I tried cleaning with 91% isopropyl alcohol with a Q-tip. Uh, obviously, you want to make sure the cassette deck switched off first before doing that. And I tried cleaning both the um, erase head and the play record head. It didn't seem to make much difference. I mean, it briefly did. Briefly, I thought, okay, it sounds a little bit better, but that only lasted a day, and then it went back to its old tricks. In the meantime, I had ordered um, a combination head cleaner and demagnetizer off eBay, and that arrived in the mail. That's the Ampex 220 demagnetizer and head cleaner and you know it looks pretty similar I guess to regular head cleaners um, except that you're not supposed to play this side you just play the idea is that you um, you rewind it at this before you want to do any demagnetizing or cleaning you rewind it first and then play it to the end and leave it you don't wind it back I guess maybe winding it back would undo some of the effects of demagnetizing I don't know and so I tried this didn't seem to make any difference I tried the isopropyl alcohol again, you know, got out the Q-tip again, clean the tape heads. I, I ran this through again, I ran this through again, and it's not making any difference. What the hell is the matter with this? 
And this whole time, it's still playing pre-recorded cassettes, okay? And so that's when my quest began over the last few days, um, going to different Goodwills. I must have been to nearly 10 of them, trying to find a cassette deck. Because, uh, you know, it's always the way. I'd seen cassette decks in every other Goodwill I'd ever been into, but I'd never paid much attention to them. And now that I'm actually finally in the market for one, I can't find one for love nor money. And, <laughs> you know, and I picked up a few purchases along the way. I did find a few things in, in the thrift stores that I bought, but, uh, and I'll show you those in just a second. So anyway, uh, tonight I'm talking to, uh, to Brad on uh, Messenger, and, um, and I said, you know, I said to him, it's funny how it's just this one tape, although I had tried the other cassette too. And I said, you know what, I'm going to try a third cassette. What, what the hell, right? So I got out another TDK. This one has or had Bruce Springsteen The River on it. Not a big deal. I have it on vinyl. Um, I recorded this when I had my old setup, old record player. Uh, the tape deck ran a little slow, um, and the vinyl was horribly warped, but I managed to kind of weigh, <laughs> weigh the head shell down with like a dime long enough to get a recording out of it. I've since replaced the record, don't worry, I no longer have that warped copy of the river. But this had been hanging around since then, so I thought, what the hell, does matter if I record over it. And so I, uh, I put it on, and I'm on, on the, the phone with Brad, and, and, um... I said, hang on, I said, have a listen to this, this sounds pretty good. So I played it back, and I'm like, what the hell, it sounds decent, you know. I mean, it's not going to be CD quality, it's, um, apart from anything else, it's a, a Type 1 cassette, but I was like, that's really weird. So then I tried it again. I, I tried it with a CD, and then I tried it with uh, a record. And, um, and it sounded fine. So the only thing I can think of is that there is something with this original best mixtape that I tried, there's something funny going on with side B of this, um, that it's not liking, and you know, the, the interesting thing, if I wind the tape for it, it looks really dark to me, maybe it's not too dark, I don't know, maybe it's normal, it looks like the type of color you normally see from like chrome cassettes, even though it's supposed to be type 1, uh, it's almost like the tape's been twisted inside out, which I can see hasn't happened, but, and, and side A still plays fine, by the way. So I don't know. Maybe maybe this was just a bad cassette. It doesn't fully explain the issue, the similar issue with the second cassette that I tried, unless they happen to be from the same batch. I don't know. I might have bought them from the same seller. I guess it's not impossible. So I think the cassette deck might be okay. I'm going to give it a little bit longer. It's playing right now. I don't know if you can hear it. It's playing Billy Joel. And it sounds good, it sounds fine, but it's playing a pre-recorded cassette, which I didn't have any problems with to begin with. So, watch this space, uh, I'll let you know if I do have to get another cassette deck or not, but for right now, I'm not feeling quite the sense of urgency that I did about it. And, you know, hey, and I even bought this cassette deck shirt for the occasion, this, you know, Maxell. You can get them in Target, 12 bucks. So I mentioned out on my travels that I did pick up a few things um, uh, at the Goodwill stores, and I did pick up um, five cassettes. So I picked up um, Don Henley, The End of the Innocence. Actually, this didn't come from a Goodwill. This came from an independent thrift store. Uh, I think it costs 25 cents. I got Stevie Nicks, The Other Side of the Mirror. I think this came from Savers, and I want, I want to say it was maybe... 50 cents, something like that. And then I picked up three Billy Joel cassettes. Um, the Stranger, which is playing right now. 52nd Street. Now, I have both of those on vinyl, but it's okay. And this is kind of an interesting one. Greatest Hits 1 and 2. Um, this um, this is a really long cassette. I don't know if you can kind of see it. It's, it's combining the two Greatest Hits albums, and they somehow jammed this onto one cassette. This is probably the equivalent of like a, a 110 or a 120 tape, I would think. But it sounds fine. I tested it earlier. It sounds alright. Um, now, I also got some CDs. Bruce Springsteen Greatest Hits. 
Stevie Wonder, the definitive collection. And Paul McCartney, Paul is Live. I was really pleased to find this. This was the, All three of these were from the same Goodwill. And in fact, uh, it was a really cool Goodwill. They had hundreds of CDs. And some really good ones. I could have bought 20 CDs there. They had like the animals, um, the birds that somebody else had grabbed that I saw. This, this kid that was in front of me. Um, and just a, a bunch of um, really solid uh, albums. And I thought, you know, if I... If I don't get out of here, I'm going to suddenly be down 40 bucks or something. So I just bought these three. I really like Paul McCartney live albums. I'm a big fan of them. Even though I think this is not one of his better ones. Um, I think that um, his um, Back in the USA. Um, actually, Back in the USA is probably the best one. Or maybe the UK version. I don't know. They're pretty similar. So I got those. So... Oh. And I got Stomping Tom, that was kind of a joke. My my brother and is kind of obsessed with Stomping Tom and he he and his family are gonna be visiting in a couple of months, so I thought he'd get a kick out of that. Um I also got on eBay these cassettes. Now I have plans for these cassettes. You guys are gonna find out what those plans are in good time. Um but suffice to say that I'll melt them for all they're worth. Sorry, we're going to get several videos out of them. Um, and I have more coming too. Don't tell the wife. I also got a um, package here off Amazon. Which will be... Uh, well, I'll probably unwrap it tonight, but we'll unveil it uh, in a day or two. In a new video. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The cassette deck, I think, might be alright. I think I might have just really just embarrassed myself and uh, panicked a little bit and again I, I still don't fully understand why the second cassette I tried also didn't sound great. It could have been a coincidence, one of those things. Um, of course I tested the second cassette before I'd done a lot of the cleaning. Um, I think I'd done a bit of it but not all of it and so it may be that at some point I I got everything working and it's, and it's just that that first cassette was never very good to begin with. I don't know. Just one of those things. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Thanks as always for, for watching. Appreciate your comments. Appreciate uh, everybody who subscribed. I think, uh, yeah, we're over 100 now. I think it was like 100 and 113 or something at last count. So uh, yeah, really appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, yeah, more videos coming the next day or two. So. Stay tuned. Um, if you haven't, please feel free to subscribe and until next time. Bye-bye.